So how did okay. you manage to get this knowledge to be able to produce a weapon? I know it's a necessity, it becomes very important. You must do it or you perish. So how did they manage to get this knowledge? What really happened was that there were these engineers and technicians. Some of them, prior to the war, they had this uh, Nigerian Defense Industrial Corporation, NDIC, which was based in Kaduna. And they sent out, they sent out some bright engineers and technicians. Some of them were trained in Germany and some other places. So of course, when they got back and there were these uh, lecturers in the university, the only university then in the eastern part of the country, the University of Nigeria, now chemists and so on, they got together. And that was how, you know, put heads together and then they began to see how, you know, weapons could be fabricated locally to save the non-available foreign exchange. And of course, even when you had the foreign exchange to buy the weapons, how do you bring them in? The only corridor into Biafra territory was by air. And the Nigerian fighters we are always looking out for, you know, these cargo planes that we are bringing in um, anything into Biafra, and they have to fly at night and land in near darkness. It was a miracle. We didn't have more, many more crashes than we did because a lot of those planes crashed actually. All right, I was looking at this uh, uh, this this uh, weapon just now, this machine. Uh, I think that should be a yeah. war machine that, that is, uh, I think, yeah. available in the museum in... Uh, Umwaya. Umwaya, yeah. Echo, in, exactly. Umwaya. In Abia, Abia uh, State now. All right, can you explain to us a little bit? Because you look very robust. And <laughs> tell us something about yeah. this. Yeah, you know, actually, I mean, the, the basic thing is that when you have an idea about something. It, it starts in its crudest form. I mean, um, like Biafra produced the flame through us and so on. These were actually some of, some of the things that we are done there. We are using already available materials. Say for instance, converting a tractor or something you know, give it an outer shell with an outer shell that is, you know, has been metal that has been hardened so that it is bulletproof and in some cases bomb proof. And you just put them together and out comes an ugly looking contraption, but which does the job. You get the point? Yeah, Those are the sort of things. Yeah, I mean, because, I mean, all you want is, at the end of the day, you want something that does a particular function. However, it's shaped, it's immaterial. So those are the kind of things, you know, production of grenades, production of bombs. You must have heard about the Obunigwe and all that. So all those things were done out of, I mean, they said uh, necessity is the mother of invention. They needed to have something to fight back with. And so these things were being manufactured as people brought ideas, experimented on them. We had casualties while these things were being produced. In my unit, I recall two young soldiers died while they were working on grenades and all that. So we had such things, but I mean, it didn't stop people from going on. These were soldiers who were previously Nigerian soldiers, not like the new recruits, you know, when the war began. These were 
people who are already in the army before uh, the problems began. This is our history, and we must uh, examine it. If I, we need to go deep into uh, these uh, uh, world tools and really uh, study it very well, because you see, somehow they make us believe that in this world we can always get everything from the outside. No, it is not true. You can't always get everything, everything from the outside. Now, look at a country like Nigeria with its size, with its military. We don't really depend on ourselves in terms of defense. We need other people to defend us. Even though we can actually uh, do a lot, we can do we, far, we far ahead of what we are we doing buy today. everything mm -hmm. of our cars, foreign exchange, you know, have to import virtually everything. I think that was one of the biggest errors they made at the end of the war for those of us who wanted to stay back with the military workshops and all that. They would have been encouraged. Uh, for those of us who were in school, of course, our desire was to get back to school and uh, continue with our education. Uh, which I personally did, but it was like throwing away uh, the baby with the bath water because these things were done in Biafra. So destroy it all. I mean, which didn't make any sense. They would have put those people together, gotten some more people to join them, and maybe by today it would have been one sort of revenue generation for the country. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And also, yeah. as, a, as, a, as a way to demonstrate that we can protect ourselves. Because like I said, if a war were to break out in Nigeria today, we would ask for AK-47. That is something coming from somewhere, no? Because of course. I, I think the only people that are actually deserve to be in peace are those who are ready for war. Because if you are not ready for war, then whatever you have can be taken by any other person. And this is because the world we live in is an imperfect world. You can't be eating chocolate and biscuit and thinking that you are free. No, it is not possible. You want, you first of all, you have to be free. And secondly, you need to protect your freedom. But since we were never, we, didn't, we never really fought for our freedom, our freedom was given, it was given a condition. And those who gave it to us a condition continue to determine how it worked here. So unfortunately, we need to be free first before we can decide how we want to govern our how we want to govern ourselves. Sorry to not put it in a very crude way like that. Okay, now look at the United States. Look at England. You can look at Germany. They will be able to provide their food, provide their weapon, pro provide everything for them. Say the same for France. That is how they are. That is why they are respected in the world. Not because they are Europeans. Sorry, it is not true. Is because yeah. they can protect themselves. How do you protect themselves if you don't even have the basic, the minimum necessity to do that? You don't, you don't even have the basic, the basic, the minimum. It's terrible. So, having said that, look at for us. You will help us to explain this one, please. The Ogunigwe uh, weapon. If Nigeria, for example, have invested on it, how can it have benefited the Nigeria military today? I like what Gowon said, no? Honestly, I like it that this is a war of no veto, no vanquish. But is that really what Nigeria, is that really what we are, how we are treating the situation? Because if that is how we are treating the situation, that this was a friendly war, a war inside the country, an internal struggle, yeah. a civil war, therefore. So why did we not do anything about the weapon they invented? That is the question. Well, I, I guess uh, all that must, all that blame must go to go on because he was still in power five years after the war. You know, if he had put certain policies in place, probably the people after him would have continued. But though he came out with uh, no victor, no vanquish, and all that, in in reality. Nothing was done in that direction. People went their uh, different ways and began to do some other things. And that was how that dream died. 